Thank you, Lally. Uh, good uh, afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure to be here at uh, this conference looking at uh, tomorrow. Uh, I think that uh, Jacques' uh, example of uh, the way in which uh, uh, countries can come together to deal with uh, threats uh, that uh, reach across national boundaries and, uh, and affect their uh, uh, ability to promote their, their national interests um, can also uh, be uh, uh, seen at work in, in the case of uh, the non-proliferation regime. On the one hand, we have uh, some very real threats to the regime and, and, a, and a real potential for uh, a, uh, a world of many nuclear powers uh, with unbridled proliferation. Uh, the North Korean uh, nuclear program, uh, the challenge that it poses to establishing a new global order, the potential for nuclear exports uh, from North Korea, uh, can have a dramatic impact on that, that uh, challenge of uh, a world with, of many nuclear powers. Similarly, in the case of Iran, uh, its defiance of uh, repeated UN Security Council resolutions, uh, its efforts to acquire nuclear weapons capability in the face of uh, the uh, will of the international community in defiance of the will of the international community, is a very uh, troubling uh, development. And one that if the Iranians succeed in this uh, defiance, uh, is likely to trigger a nuclear arms race in this region, uh, where Israel lives, uh, in which uh, the Middle East could become uh, a far, far more dangerous place uh, even than it is today if one imagines that uh, Saudi Arabia buys a nuclear weapon, Egypt uh, begins to de develop one, and, and uh, uh, of course Israel finds itself in a hair trigger situation. Uh, so one can, can see very clearly uh, the potential for nuclear chaos, uh, but it's precisely because that threat is clear that you see uh, a whole range of uh, responses from the international community designed to try to head that off. Now, it's not clear that it will succeed, but in the case of North Korea and Iran, you have the world powers coming together uh, in an effort to uh, constrain them. The talks in Geneva yesterday apparently did not go well but are nevertheless focused uh, on an effort to get Iran to ship out its, uh, its enriched uh, uranium uh, so that it will be placed under more effective international controls. Uh, they have agreed in principle to do that. The reason that they agreed in principle to do that, I believe, is because it was possible for the first time to put together a, a coalition of powers that included uh, the Russians and therefore uh, created a circumstance in which Iran felt that if it did not find at least a tactical way to head off what was a becoming a united will by the international community to curb its nuclear program, uh, it would find itself in great difficulties. And indeed, as I understand it, that was the message that the Russians gave the Supreme Leader. That unless he found a way to respond to the demands of the international community, Iran would find itself on its own, and Russia would not be able to do anything to help it, and the consequences would be severe indeed. Uh, and so we have a very clear example of the way in which threat produces a response that may, if the response remains a united response, uh, produce a breakthrough to uh, curbing of Iran's nuclear <laughs> capabilities. Uh, that in itself would not be enough. And so we have President Obama at the, uh, uh, chairing a UN Security Council meeting last uh, month, 
uh, in which the focus was on uh, how to reform the non-proliferation regime in a way that tightens the uh, safeguards, the inspections, uh, and, and creates a circumstance in which it becomes much harder for uh, those countries like Iran and North Korea that would seek to break out uh, and acquire nuclear weapons to do so. Uh, and that effort is combined with an effort by the United States and Russia to negotiate uh, new and serious reductions in their own nuclear arsenals so as to be able to make the case that they, uh, too, the biggest nuclear powers in the world, are uh, prepared to respect their obligations in the non-proliferation uh, treaty and the regime to uh, uh, seriously reduce their nuclear arsenals. Uh, so you can see emerge uh, both a threat and a response. Uh, it's not at all clear that uh, uh, which one will prevail. Will it be global chaos or global order? But at least uh, one can uh, see a trend uh, that as the threat grows, uh, we now see the international community coming together in new ways to try to deal with it. And that leaves me a little bit hopeful.